Second, uh, my parents told me to care for others. Uh, uh, even when, you know, in poor countries like the Philippines, it's not expensive to hire people to work at home. My parents always would say, we have to be kind to them. They're helping us. We shouldn't be cruel. Uh, so it was embedded in my uh, thinking. And number three, we have to serve the people. Yes, we need to earn a livelihood, but we shouldn't just think of profit. We should think of others, care for others. And number four, we have to be fair. And then number five, when I was growing up, my father would always say, eat that last grain of rice. I say, why? My father would say, because the farmer toiled four months under the heat of the sun for you to have that speck of rice. So up to now, I'm conscious, like, I shouldn't get more than what I want. So if there's a speck of rice, I'll eat it to the last grain of rice. And Number six, my parents told me growing up, so my values are very clear, if people would rob you, if things will be stolen, if there's a fire, your life is more important. So when something, how can I say, go take them. Not that I, I would not suffer, but rather I'd say, I'm, I'm happy, I'm lucky, I'm alive. So let the people steal everything, but I still have my life. Thank you. 
some, some of that some of that meaning resonate with us. Um, <clears throat> what? Um, so we have kind of two more questions, but we also want to allow some 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 time for questions from you. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take a skip, and if we have time, we can circle back to one of these questions. And one is um, given everything that we heard about today and, and your, your own experiences, can you share with us, from your own personal experience and from your own perspective, how do you think cultural values impact the experiences of Asian and Asian American college students? One thing that I think that we should bear in written five random notes. Number one, again, each person uh, brings with him or her a baggage. Each one is a different baggage. So we cannot treat everyone the same. You saw three case studies, totally different. And number two, there also may be two possible attitudes when dealing with students, you know, either staff, faculty, or among the students. Some would just let go, you know? Why should I complain? Uh, let her keep the harmony instead of surfacing the tension. Whereas others would really complain, say, why did I get this grade? Why, why am I being punished? 
why do I have to go to the you know disciplinary board? And number three, uh, well, I already mentioned, I think each is different. Number four, uh, we need to get time to know each Asian, Asian American. They're different, so we have to invest in time. Be proactive, talk with the student organizations. Maybe that's all we to do it. And then, I think in general, many would prefer that if there are criticism, they're not either public nor too direct. Uh, you say it maybe through an allegory, uh, by saying in general, it's not good to do this, and then not to publicly. Here, they always say it's competition, it's good, criticism, don't take it personally. But people take it personally. So maybe there are other indirect ways of saying things. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm keeping an eye on the, on the clock as well. And so just give our panelists a note for a moment. Yeah, I know I learned a lot just listening to, to the stories I've known uh, Ray since extra since 2000 or before. And he's had known for a couple years now. but. Each of their stories have added a, a different depth and meaning um, to knowing them today. So at this time, we'll give you a chance to ask our panelists some questions, maybe from their stories that they, the photos that they showed us, or the stories that they shared. Questions? Yes, great. Well, uh, first of all, I was really impressed with the way that you guys were able to bring
really depends on the student. So in an earlier session, we talked about the various resources that are available and also the listening skills. If, if you wrote that email, we can send those handouts. That might be helpful as you work with them. We're kind of finding out what their needs are. Mm -hmm. Or if they ask a question, do you maybe ask what makes that important for you? Or in what way is this important for you? What kinds of things might you need to know from me? It could be too prone. One academically could just say, you know, what is your interest, what fields are you in, and are you good at this and that. And then second, in terms of identity, it could go two ways as well. One is for those who are interested to feel at home. I think there are literature showing that if there are teachers who look like me, I feel better. Like in high schools, it's well documented, not much has been done. Like African-American students need male African-American teachers in K-12. It's been said in DeKalb by forever. They have principals all over the DeKalb County, but we need more African-American male teachers. And it's been raised, it's not. The same with Asian-American. For those who feel strongly, you can say, okay, if you're in engineering, don't you know? There are people from Palestine, from India, from China, from Taiwan. And in fact, most of the teachers look like you in engineering. And this, oh yeah, so I feel, etc., in all the different fields. And then, for those who are not, it could go again two ways. You can say, well, who among you are interested in getting to know the Asian American community? I'm not advertising, but there's the Asian American Center, and then, yeah, and people do different things. Like when we organize Philippine Night, it's a nightmare, and Southeast Asian Night, it's a nightmare. Why? Because the Asians want traditional stuff. Like, it has to look like this and that. But the Asian members are like, no, we want hip hop. So it's a fight. We say, okay, don't fight, we can have both. So even among Asian, Asian Americans, it's a fight. It's really painful. And then we have to say, it's inclusive. We can have hip hop, we can have traditional. Go for it. So it's really open and ended and trying to to say, what are your interests, what do you want? Then you can do it with the Asian American Center. Either you're traditional or you're for hip hop. Yeah. <laughs> Association Triple A, and one came just one week from the Philippines, and you know what she said? Oh, I don't speak Filipino. I'm like, excuse me, we all learn Filipino in the country. Okay, so there are people who just want to be assimilated immediately. There are others who don't know their identity, and then who don't care, but sooner or later say, oh, I want to explore, I want to learn Tagalog, the Asian Americans born here. You could meet all kinds of Asians and Asian Americans. Well, it's, it's new, and so we just want to again thank the panelists one more time, and thank you. All.
understand her.